In my last video looking at gaming PC listings online, I found a PC on a UK-based site called Curry's that had me mildly impressed. Okay, I, I can get behind this system. However, going by the comment section on that video, Curry's has farted in the kebab of every person living in the UK. So I decided to fly to London and buy a gaming PC from Curry's myself to see if I end up with a stinky kebab. But before we do that, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor that helped pay for this journey. Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. If you've watched even a single one of my videos, you've heard a lot of their music. From hits like... to... Here's another one. How about some sound effects? Epidemic Sound offers a huge library of high-quality royalty-free music and sound effects with a library that's growing by the week. And you never have to worry about copyright claims. Sign up to the annual personal plan using my code DAVID50 to get 50% off. Use the link in my description below and enter the code at checkout. Thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. Fun fact, maple syrup is the only thing you can buy in a Canadian airport. Okay, so apparently it's just a Best Buy. Here's all the OEM crap boxes. Hell yeah. I guess this is where the gaming lives. So apparently in-store stock of gaming pre-built crap doesn't really exist in the UK, so we're gonna have to order something online. So after flying all this way, I couldn't actually buy a gaming PC physically in a Curry's, which is already soiling my kebab a bit. But luckily, Curry's does offer next day delivery on their gaming systems, which seems quite a bit faster than other UK-based pre-built sites. Now in the meantime, I did stumble onto a CEX, which is like a used electronic shop. Now they didn't have any pre-builds other than just an old Optiplex, but they did have some deals on used graphics cards and gaming consoles and stuff like that, and it was a pretty Pretty cool shop. Would you look at that? I finally got my hands on the PC all of you told me not to buy. So let's see if it's gonna bring flesh-eating bacteria into my life. Now aside from it not really having any print on the box, which is good, uh, we do have handles on the side of the box, which makes it really annoying to carry actually. Okay, we've got some, some pretty soft foam in here protecting the case, it's good. Ooh, shit. Oh, okay, that just came straight out. Oh, I think this is actually the e-waste peripherals we got, so let's have a closer look at these. A ready to upgrade guide, okay, that's interesting. It kind of tells you what all the parts are in the system and it even has a guide for upgrading like RAM and stuff in a laptop. So this is, I think, what you get with any PC specialist kind of sub-brand stuff. And then there's some more just general little pieces that you need to upgrade a system with like SATA cables. So I think they just chuck all the motherboard and case accessories into this box, basically. And we still don't get e-waste peripherals. Let's hope it survived being dropped on its head. <sighs> now I'm actually very hopeful that it survived me dropping it on its head because it's got the kind of like internal expandy foam stuff inside. So it should actually be okay. On the front, we have this kind of metal effect pretty sure that's plastic, that wraps all the way around to the sides. So the only real gap for front airflow is this bit here that's been kind of cellophaned off. They just wanted to make sure that if you are the type of person that doesn't peel the plastic off of electronics, uh, that your system will catch on fire. So that's a nice touch. And you actually have to remember to also remove the plastic from the bottom front lip. Otherwise you're losing half of your air intake. Around the back, we do have a very limited rear IO. I hope 
these aren't USB 2 ports because if we just have one USB 3 on the back, that would be that would be pretty sad. Uh, but it, it, it's okay, it's all usable. And then here we have the graphics card, which is relatively exciting. We'll get into what that is a bit later. Uh, we've also got some Wi-Fi down here and then the power supply, which I think is also by Corsair. But again, we'll have a closer look at that a bit later. And then again, on the side, we've got instructions in all of the languages on how to get your system set up the first time, which again, that's really nice. I, I like that inclusion. We've got a bit of, bit of foamies. Hey, there we go. Oh, it looks so comfy on the beanbag. Wow, that PC looks surprisingly well put together. The first thing you'll notice is look at that. We've got dual channel RAM. We also don't get a relationship ruiningly tiny CPU cooler, which is very nice. I don't actually recognize that cooler, but it does look like it very much is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 equivalent. So that's a very solid cooler for the CPU that we have under here, which is actually an Intel i5 12400F, a very, very good CPU. And that is paired with an RTX 3060. This is a Zotac card that I've not had any personal experience with. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the temperatures stack up in this case. But other than that, we've got an SSD, which I also don't recognize. It's just got like a, like a PC specialist sticker on it. And then the motherboard is a Gigabyte B660DS3H, which it's got a little bit of VRM cooling on it. Now, aside from the standard gaming pre-built front fan suffocation, which admittedly on this case doesn't seem as bad as the worst offenders, there is unusually little to complain about in terms of assembly. But with that, let's have a look at the back of the case. Oh, someone put some real time and effort into managing this rear cable management. This is the neatest PC booty I think I've ever seen. Look at all of that. It's all zip tied down nicely. The same goes for up here. I mean, that is like overkill zip tying down to keep everything in place nicely. Now, in terms of the power supply, we have a Corsair CV550 in here, which is like a little baby Corsair power supply. Um, it's fine. It, it, it's not the greatest, but it is one of the newer gray label ones, so I don't think it's an immediate fire hazard. They've even made it pretty easy to get your hands on the like SATA power connectors and stuff if you want to add your own hard drives or SSDs in the back of the case. I don't think I've even gotten close to cable managing a system this neatly. Look at that. Very clean PC booty. Now that's not a great first startup sign, just immediately seeing Bullguard optimizing your PC. Don't love that. Uh, we've also got Bullguard Secure Browser. Wow, Bulldog does have a whole lot of stuff going on. All apps, let's see. So aside from GeForce Experience, we've got the kind of like Gigabyte App Center. So this is to control all of the RGB on it, which yeah, it makes sense that that's on here. That does seem to be the worst of it. So it's just an antivirus. Uh, Windows 11 and some RGB software. So it's definitely not Dell system loaded down, but it, it, it could be better. Uh, anyway, let's see what speed the RAM is running at. Look at that, that's very exciting. It's actually running at its rated speed out of the box, which is very rare for this kind of system. And it's in dual channels. So we don't have any immediately apparent just gunshots to the kneecaps of the performance of the system. Um, and on that note, let's try and game on it. <clears throat> Gone straight up to about 75 on the GPU. Uh, we've barely been playing, that's not ideal, but we are currently stuck in the hell heat summer of London, so that may <laughs> that may actually affect it. With uh, 1080p very high settings, it's, it's running very nicely. Like this is about as good a GTA 5 gaming experience as you can have at 1080p. The frame time graph is very flat, so there's no like weird stutters or anything going on. Okay, so we've been playing Battlefield 5 at 1080p high settings for about 20 minutes now, and the temperatures have stabilized at an acceptable place, especially considering with our highly accurate and scientific ambient temperature measurement, uh, we are at least 26 degrees Celsius here. So yeah, that's not too bad. 
Uh, it does sound like the system's struggling a little bit in the heat. We're not, there's no throttling happening and we're not losing any performance. And that's, that's good. If it were to be like a Dell system of the same price, it would have exploded by now. And what's also a really good sign is that there's nothing obviously kneecapping any performance here. Uh, the system is actually quite balanced in terms of CPU and GPU pairing at 1080p. So here we have Cyberpunk running at 1080p high settings and um, it's actually kind of boring at this point because, well, everything's running perfectly fine. The graphics got a little bit unhappy that the fires of Mordor are burning inside this room and considering that, I, it's not too bad. Now after testing this system, I was surprised at how little there was to complain about. Yes, the graphics card did get a bit hot, but we were pre-apocalyptic London heatwave, so yeah, fair enough. Now in terms of pricing, I paid 1,150 British pounds sterling for this system, which translates into about 1,380 US dollars. And remember, that includes shipping and tax. So taking all of that into account, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of this Curry's system. And if you have personal experience with the Curry system, I'd also be very interested to hear about that. Also, thank you very much to the awesome Patreons that help support the channel and make things like this possible. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.